In our Sunrise Smart Start, hundreds of people from across the country are expected to be in the nation's capital today for the 49th annual March for Life. The march is held on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, and organizers of this year's march hope this year will be the year the Supreme Court overturns the 1974 decision. Now, at this time, we are joined by Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke with more on this. Anna, good morning. Who is expected to speak at today's rally? Good morning. Well, we heard from Republican lawmakers uh, over this week saying that they do actually plan to stick around this weekend to attend the march. Uh, several members of Congress are also scheduled to speak as well. Uh, we also do know that um, pro-life advocates from various organi organizations are uh, slated to take the podium uh, as well, uh, along with actor Kirk Cameron and Duck Dynasty star Lisa Robertson. So the rally is uh, scheduled to start at noon today on the National Mall uh, and then followed by the march across downtown to the steps of the Supreme Court. All right, Anna, thank you so much for your time. Last year, the Supreme Court heard arguments over laws from Texas and Mississippi that restrict a woman's time frame in which she can legally get an abortion. A decision on those cases has not yet been reached. Well, some Buffalo Bills fans uh, heading to Kansas City this morning as they get ready for Sunday's big playoff game against the Chiefs. Yeah, whether you're driving over 900 miles or flying, we've got you covered on all you need to know for that trip. Eric and Akaz joining us now live from the airport in Rochester with more on what this weekend of travel looks like. Good morning, Eric and Good morning. Well, we found out about this game Sunday night, so not a lot of time for Bills fans to decide if they want to travel or not. A AAA tells me flights booked pretty quickly this week. Most people are planning to fly out this morning or tomorrow and return on Monday. Now, most of these flights are just under $500. Elizabeth Carey from AAA says... She says some fans are also looking to save money and planning a road trip instead. That would be more than 14 hours on the road. But the good news is no extreme weather should be getting in the way of travel this weekend. Just very cold temperatures. So fans should dress accordingly and be prepared to expect some potential delays if planes have to de-ice before leaving. What we're seeing is a lot of people looking to fly out on Friday or Saturday and to fly back on Monday because the game is Sunday evening. I would not recommend trying to fly out Sunday morning. There's just been so many uh, disruptions with flights and connections. You're better off to go on Friday or Saturday so you can get there, have that excitement, be part of the pregame festivities. Now, you may be wondering if there are some concerns with the role of 5G this weekend affecting flights. Uh, AP reports that the situation may de be diffused for now as AT&T AT and Verizon have delayed the rollout near some airports. As, uh, as always, AAA says you should be prepared for anything and plan a lot of time. In the Rochester Airport, Erica Cost, News 8. Erica, thank you. We love the Bills hat. Uh, for fans attending the game, masks are recommended at Arrowhead Stadium in indoor spaces, but are not required. Tune in to Countdown to Kickoff. It's coming up tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock right here on Channel 8. We will have live updates from Kansas City from Thad Brown and the crew. A reminder, you can only see this highly anticipated playoff game right here on Channel 8 WROC. Kickoff is 6.30 on Sunday. And those headed to the game, Christine, they're leaving a very cold temperatures here, but it's not going to be a whole lot better there. Right. Yes, definitely a much more tolerable type of a cold. This is uh, what we're mainly used to around here. Temperatures right around 30, right? That's no big deal. That's a, a much nicer type of a cold uh, with kickoff at 630 at Airhead Stadium. Mostly clear skies, uh, nothing really to get in the way of the game. We'll focus here on our weekend forecast, though. It does look like we'll see some improvements by the time we get to both weekend days in the afternoons with highs back in the 20s, but that Saturday morning start is going to be uh, definitely a very, very cold start. We've got wind chills negative 15 below zero at first spots and temperatures uh, that will slowly warm throughout the day, but we'll have to wait a little bit to get there. Snow showers do return for our Sunday as well. All right, Christine, thank you. No accidents at this hour as we check your sunrise traffic 390, 490 and 590 all up to speed.
Turning now to some news. New this morning, Rochester police investigating a shooting on Frost Avenue late last night. Officers say they were approached by a 46-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the lower body. It happened around 10 o'clock. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There are no suspects in custody. One man was sent to the hospital after a crash led to a fight in Rochester. Police responding to Lake Avenue at Glendale Park around 11 p.m. last night, where they say two parties were fighting in the street following an accident. Incident. Officers say a 54-year-old man was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police also say the car involved in the crash was stolen from Greece and the suspects fled on foot. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. Now let's get the latest on COVID-19. Some local SUNY campuses will operate as COVID testing sites beginning today. MCC and FLCC will be able to administer over 200 tests daily for students and staff while also allowing a limited number of walk-ins from the community as well. 29 SUNY campuses are now operating as testing locations across the state. This news coming as New York State is reporting progress in the fight against COVID. Governor Hochul says hospital admissions across the state are down 20 percent compared to this time last week. For new cases, the decline is even more significant. Positive test results are down more than 47% compared to just seven days ago. The governor says the weekly case average is declining across all regions as well. Well, a man has been arrested in connection with a fatal shooting in Rochester. 36-year-old Terrell McKnight was shot and killed on Watkin Terrace back on December 4th. According to investigators, 29-year-old Rashad Brown was arrested by the U.S. Marshals Task Force yesterday in Geneva. Brown has been charged with second-degree murder. He is due to be arraigned coming up today. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office is searching for a missing teenager this morning. 15-year-old Lynn Zara Rogers was last seen near Meadow Brook Apartments in North Chile. She is described as 5'3 and was last seen wearing a gray sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and a black bonnet in her hair. She is not believed to be in any danger, but anyone with information is asked to call 911. Today is the last day on the job for Gates Police Chief Jim Van Bretta Road. Van Bretter Road's retirement comes after 34 years with Gates PD and three more with the Rochester Police Department. He has served as the chief in Gates since 2013 and president of the Monroe County Chiefs Association since 2017. The New York State Liquor Authority says beer and wine can now be served in theaters. The ruling going into effect immediately and theaters can now apply for a liquor license. Theaters that also operate as restaurants can serve all kinds of alcohol. Well, how about this news? The Empire State topping New Jersey for the number one spot in the sports betting market. The company Geo Comply Solutions says it recorded almost 18 million transactions last weekend in New York. That's up from just more than 17 million the weekend before. Mobile sports betting became legal in New York on January 8th. Here's what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning, and it's sad news today. Singer and rock legend Meatloaf has died. He was 74. Known to his family as Marvin Lee Day, the Grammy winner, best known for his Bat Out of Hell album and his role as Eddie in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. A cause of death has not been announced. And we've had uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Lights humming in our head mm -hmm. all morning long here as we think about Meatloaf. Yeah, yeah great song. Peace. Rest in peace indeed. Yes. Uh, Christine, uh, it is uh, quiet uh, out there. It's sort of a cold chilly, quiet mm -hmm. morning on this Oh, Friday. yes. We've got cold. Uh, we've got maybe a few lake effect flakes, but the story really is just how frigid we are. It's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to get outside with temperatures this cold. We've got 11 degrees in Rochester, a few spots at 7, like Honeyoy Falls, Livonia at 7, a few places dropping below zero, like South Bristol at negative 1. Now, wind chills throughout the day aren't going to be uh, that much warmer, but actual air temperatures uh, will be around below teens, so definitely a hot cup of coffee type of a day. Those wind chills, though, are really going to hurt, especially as we get into uh, tonight and into tomorrow. Here are the temperatures throughout the next 24 hours. You can see actual temperatures dipping below zero, which means wind chills are going to follow a similar suit. We're watching uh, that Saturday morning for that brutal cold that we'll have to be careful of if we step outside. So bundle up and just uh, protect yourself if you have to be outside uh, Saturday morning. But uh, again, kind of that cold that we're, we're used to, but we'll have to keep watch for. Absolutely. Thank you, Christine. Some great tips there. Thank you so much for watching us on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.